Hey guys, my name's Kadroth, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about the Trung Sisters. They're going to be the limited five-star single-target saber that's going to be coming out with the Sea Monster Crisis event here. Now, Trung Sisters are, I'm going to say, an interesting unit over time. They're not like this sexy new unit that everyone's super hyped for or anything like that. But they are a sneakily good unit. And the thing that I'm going to try to, to really emphasize here with them is that Drunk Sisters are very good in a challenge environment. They're very good in a group environment. And you're going to see why as we go through their kit. So they're certainly a good unit to consider. Definitely not something that everybody has to go out and rush out and try to pick up. If you're in saving mode, I think you're okay to continue saving. But the Trung Sisters can be a really good unit to have in your back pocket, especially for certain really annoying fights. So I'm going to try to make the case for them as we go through their entire kit. Unfortunately, as I said, they are limited, so Trung Sisters are really not going to have another banner for over a year. They're going to come back with the 8th anniversary next year, so not even this year again. So if you don't roll for them here, you're looking at at least a decently long wait if you can't get lucky and snag them in a GSSR. So in that regard, this is why it's worth considering right now, as opposed to waiting and then going, oh, wait, do I actually want to roll later? So again, Strung Sisters are going to start out here with basically almost 12k attack. This is a very nice number, especially for a Saber. It's not the best amongst all Sabers or anything like that, but it is a very respectable number and certainly uh, pretty decent in comparison to really a lot of other classes. Now, again, as I said, they are single target, they are arts, but they do have at least up to 14k HP here. This is going to be really good for them. It's going to make them on the thicker side a little bit beefier. Certainly not as well, uh, crazy amounts, but it's at least a respectable amount. They are man attribute here, and they do have 100 star absorption, which is right on the average. They've got 10.2 star generation, which is slightly higher than average, and basically 0.43 MP charge attack rate. This is seemingly low, but I think you're going to see it's not really that big of a concern. They do have MP charge defense of a standard amount of 3%, and they have slightly under average death rate, but still not great, and an alignment of lawful and good. The Trung Sisters are female. They do have the Divine trait. They are a group servant, so kind of like Dio Scurry, where it's two servants in one. Uh, that's kind of what this is talking about here. And uh, the Hominidae servant, humanoid, sovereign, aka king, or riding servant, seven knight servant, stout defender, and weak to Inima Ella. So they've got a whole litany of traits, uh, especially as we've been going over some of the recent JP units where they seemingly are cutting down on trait bloat. Strung sisters are a big point of just kind of, they have a lot of them. Now you can see here their deck is actually 2B2A1Q, that is to say 2 Buster, 2 Arts, 1 Quick, and they do have fairly good hit counts. Basically everything hit count wise is average, with the exception being their Arts card, which is exactly what you would want, being above average. This is probably another reason that they kept the uh, NP charge attack rate lower, is because again, these two Arts cards will do pretty good refund wise. Now, talking about their actual skills here, we can see that they have party-wide attack up for three turns and party-wide arts performance for three turns. So this first skill kind of just hits you right off the bat and shows you that the focus of the Trung Sisters is on the group and trying to make sure everybody is kind of going down the stretch through the fight with them. So you can see, again, it's three turns of party-wide attack and arts. That's just really solid, and it's all on a five-turn cooldown. So you've also got a low cooldown to boot. Their second skill here is going to increase their own arts performance even further by an additional 15%. So that's going to be 30% for them total right there. And then buster performance as well for 15%. So again, that 2A, 2B type of deck there, this means you've got basically 80% card coverage for the Trung Sisters with their uh, with this second skill. And then it's going to grant them a self buff on attack for three turns, which is that whenever they attack with a arts card, it's going to increase their buster performance by 10%, which 
whenever they attack with a buster card, it's going to increase their arts performance by 10%. So basically, if you use one card, it'll buff the other card type. So again, if you're doing like a BAA chain, something like buster arts arts, right? Then that lead buster card is going to buff arts and then the subsequent arts cards will be able to take advantage of it. So it works really, really good in that regard as it allows you to just sort of uh, kind of keep like jacking up the main cards you would want to be using anyways on the trunk sisters and probably the craziest part about this is this is all on a four turn cooldown so they have absurd uptime even if you don't lower this skill it's still only going to be on a five turn cooldown which is also not bad so you've got really really nice like cooldowns already as you can see with the trunk sisters then we get to the third skill. The third skill is going to be a self-charge of up to 30% here. NP generation for the entire party by 20%. And party critical attack chance resistance for three turns by 20%. So to summarize again, basically only their second skill is selfish. Everything else does stuff for the party. And really what's nice about this one is that it's self-charge, party-wide NP gain. And it's going to start protecting the party from just stray crits. So again, you can already just see they're making the party stronger, they're protecting the party, and we haven't even gotten to the NP yet. The Trunk Sisters do have Passive Magic Resistance B, Writing B, and Divinity C here. So again, some additional debuff resistance, quick performance uh, for their singular quick card, and Divinity adding a little bit of flat damage to the, uh, to the damage calculations. Not anything too strong, but again, pretty decent uh, to say the least. There are pen skills here. They do have anti-assassin attack damage aptitude. There's not really any synergy here, so I wouldn't worry too much about this one. This should be the odd man out for your pens, because again, the focus is going to primarily be on either the extra attack finesse or the mana loading. I do recommend, as usual, mana loading, especially on an arts unit. You're going to be probably wanting to loop them a lot, so having an easier time getting to that initial NP can just help you out. Might help you out uh, in terms of being able to shift different supports around, or maybe just use different craft essences in conjunction with them. So it's usually the first one I'm going to recommend. But still, given the fact that we know this is going to be a challenge-oriented unit, maybe the extra attack finesse really calls to you, because remember, it's not just the extra damage that you're getting on enhancing this. You're also getting getting enhanced star generation and NP generation by working on it. So really a decent to pen to consider. The Noble Phantasm here is a nine hit single target arts NP. So you know refund's going to be pretty decent there as a result of that. Uh, and we do have the ability to just straight up deal damage to one enemy. But then the kicker here and the reason that this is uh, the Trunk Sisters are so party oriented is because then they're going to heal the party's HP by a thousand every turn for three turns. So as you're looping them, this is just going to start stacking and you're just going to keep healing everybody. This is going to be great for things like a Castoria comp or heck, maybe even if you're including someone like Tamamo and you're maybe in between Tamamo NPs and you just need people to kind of not get beaten down and killed off before Tamamo can get that MP off. There you go. You're going to have at least a little bit more staying power thanks to this. So again, the Trunk Sisters have a very, very party oriented kit. And if that wasn't apparent, here you go with the overcharge. We're further going to increase the party's arts and buster performance for three turns by an additional 10% after the NP goes out. So this isn't gonna impact the NP itself unless you're looping for a second NP, but this will at least make sure that the party overall is gonna have good performance. And again, enhancing arts performance for the entire party in an arts comp is just going to lead to even more, even faster NPs, not only from someone like the Trunk Sisters, but also from your supports. And you could even say that the Trunk Sisters might even be a support depending on how you look at it. They're just not really a meta one. They are somewhat of a hybrid. They can definitely help deal damage and be the sort of damage focus, but they can also help keep the party alive and keep everything rolling. And so in that regard, I think you can see the Trung Sisters have a very synergistic and party-oriented kit. It's something that's just really going to help them out in certain really annoying boss fights. Now, let's go ahead and talk about those refund numbers. Now, in the Trunk Sisters case, their refund is not the best, and a lot of it is going to be kept down by this NP charge attack rate. 
but it's not the end of the world as they do have a lot of stuff in their kit to help out. So they can end up with even only one out of the possible nine hits of overkill, which is basically saying you killed the enemy if you got even one hit of overkill. You would be looking at functionally 52.9% if we're working with double Castoria. So again, they're going to get half of that in P back. They're going to end up having all those additional party-wide effects. And then you're also going to probably have the Castorias charging them. So it's not going to be that difficult to get back or maybe even rely on cards from this point to make sure they get back to 100%. And certainly that's not even considering things like a boss hitting them back, which can absolutely be the case. So there are numerous ways that you can make sure that this would end up being a very consistent refund amount. Anything over 50% is usually going to be pretty good at ensuring that you can get back to another NP. And Arts usually doesn't struggle. If you do manage to get all 9 out of 9 overkill hits, which is highly unlikely, you could get up to 75% refund with Double Castoria. But again, that's probably not that likely, but it's just a good idea to have an idea of the scalability of their NP gain. You're never going to really get beyond that unless you're including a third support, someone like maybe like a Nero Bride or a Tamamo to get even more. But that is obviously an option and would be something that you could do. Now, as for Trung Sisters, like craft essence recommendations then as a result i'm gonna highly recommend black grail because we just know that the trung sisters already have a very party oriented kit their damage is not going to be the strongest in the game by any means but it's actually not that bad you're going to be probably pretty surprised by how decent it can be sort of a little bit of a modern power creep if you will for the single target sabers but again it's still not going to be the best in class so and with that in mind, I'm going to recommend something like Black Grail just to help out that damage even more. But maybe refund is a little bit more of the concern. Maybe you just don't like the fact of relying potentially on cards or something like that. So we can always recommend something like Ocean Flyer as a 50% starting charge sheet, and it would be very good for you. If you wanted to maybe start from zero, but maybe wanted a teensy weensy bit more refund than something like Royal Icing, which is another welfare CE from the old Oniland event, could be an option as this would give you at least 10% arts. And there are numerous other 0% starting charge sheets that could help you out in this regard. Something like, say, Sign of a Smiling Face or even Knowing the Way Broadly. But again, none of those options are going to end up being welfare. So it's just kind of up to you to determine which CE would work best for you in that scenario. Obviously, we also have considerations for things like Honey Lake. As you saw, the Trung Sisters don't have any Invuln Pierce or buff stripping capabilities. So you're probably going to want a good Invuln Pierce type of CE on hand to help them out. And Honey Lake is just sort of the gold standard for those right now, given the fact that it gives that 40% power mod to impact not only the NP, but also potential carding applications. You would need to put burn command codes on her in order to take advantage of it, but it would not be that difficult to secure, and it would actually help out the damage significantly while still providing the Invuln Pierce. But Honey Lake is somewhat hard to get. It's all the way from back at Summer 5. So at this point, if you don't have your hands on it, it could be somewhat difficult to acquire. We did have a much more recent addition to the roster, though, that could help out with that. If you did manage to roll the Valentine's banner, Valentine Witches here is a decent one as well. As you can see at MLB, it will be Ignore Invincibility, NP damage of 25%, and some additional NP generation there of 10%. You've also got the attack up being just full scaling there, so definitely a decent option for you. And again, it's not the only one, as there are going to be plenty more to come still, or plenty more that you might already have. But that's the consideration in terms of craft essences that I would go with. Talking about Trung Sister's actual damage, this is just self-buff only. And you can see, I believe these are neutral numbers as well. So this is uh, basically just going to be them under their own power without having to consider uh, something like, uh, again, like, like external support from a Castoria or Tamamo or something like that. You can also see if we were to try to work out sort of their optimal charge scenario here, this is going to be starting them from zero. We'd start out with the Trunk Sisters' own charge, basically work in the entirety of one of the Castoria skills, use the NP gain from another Castoria, and that alone is going to get you up to 100% and pretty much get you at full refund. 
they're going to refund back 52%. You're going to end up using the other Castoria as 30%, mix in an Oberon 20% from there. You're at 100% again for wave two and you're good. They're going to refund back 55% here. And then you just use Oberon's final charge skill and that's going to be enough to loop them. So that's an easy demonstration of kind of how to figure out how to make them work. But that's assuming you just want a three turn and you're not doing something challenging necessarily. So talking about the damage in that scenario, we're looking at basically a two times Castoria Oberon with level 100 Black Grail and Neo Plug. Obviously, idyllic settings, not everyone's going to necessarily have an MLB uh, Black Grail. Not everyone's going to have a Neo Plug suit all the way maxed out yet. But certainly it's something to consider as we look at this just for a comparative sake. And you can see they actually do a very respectable number here, even at NP1 at 498. This is certainly not top in class though, so we've got some other considerations for competitors that we can look at. So for instance, if we start looking at Summer Hokusai, who is a welfare, you can actually beat her damage ever so slightly. Problem with this is we are assuming a level 100 sign of a smiling face, which is another very limited craft essence. So it's not necessarily going to be something that someone's going to have. And again, this is still assuming idyllic conditions, if you will. But this would be something that would give her at least a slight damage edge. And you could maybe risk it and go with Black Grail on Hokusai for even better numbers. But you would have to rely on cards at that point. Still, if you manage to uh, want a super consistent method as well, Ocean Flyer is another like decent welfare option that we've talked about. This would pull her numbers down quite a bit, but she would still be in that same ballpark as the Trung sisters there. Again, as you can see, as the Trung sisters were at that 498 number. Now, we do have another one out there who's another four star, and that's Saito. Saito uh, Hajime has a pretty interesting track as well. He's actually been a pretty good looper. and He actually does work for looping over the upcoming, really, I'd say, first 90 plus plus farm node that we get in Summer 7, which is going to end up being a 1-1-1 Lancer node, basically, with Enkidu at the end. And Saito was used in that. He was not necessarily the best option, but he was an option that a lot of people had that worked. And so you can see he can kind of do pretty decent numbers. This is using Royal Icing, not even something like Black Grail, because again, you're probably going to have to rely on cards if you're going to make that work. But it is something that could be possible depending on you getting overkill hits with Saito. So looking at that, just at MP1, he'd only be at 311, but already at MP2, it's starting to scale really well. And at MP5, he will actually beat the Trung Sisters. So at that point, there is something to be considered depending on if you've rolled. Saito as well, like we said, if you wanted to look at actual Black Grail numbers, this is going to help him out quite a bit more. As you can see already then at NP2, Saito is just trouncing them, whereas at NP1, he would still be lower than them significantly. But again, it's really just going to depend on if you want to rely on the cards or if you think you can get away with it. So then next up here is Dioscuri, and Dioscuri is going to be the comparison that I think a lot of people are going to draw. They're yet another twin unit. They're also a single target art saber, and they have a very interesting card oriented kit, just like uh, basically the Trung sisters have. So looking at this, you can see the idyllic settings for uh, Dioscuri is going to be two times Castoria Oberon, a level 100 Ocean Flyer, and Neo Plug Suit. Uh, again, even with Sign of a Smiling Face or something like that, you would need 5 out of 8 overkill hits to make it work. So it's not very reasonable to assume that you can make something like that work. You might with really low health enemies, but anything challenging, probably not going to be the case. Still, though, you can see Dio Scurry, the damage number here is going to be a lot less. Even at NP2, they're going to end up failing the mark quite a bit. But part of the reason for stuff like this is because of the actual kit that Dioscuri has. And again, Dioscuri probably is at this point in need of a damage upgrade. So this is why I said you might see a little bit of power creep out of the Trung Sisters in that regard. But remember, Dioscuri does have Invuln Pierce on every single NP. So that is also a sort of mark in their favor as they wouldn't need to rely on an Invuln Pierce CE nearly as much as some of the other units would. So again, definitely not as much in terms of damage, but certainly good. I think this is a really interesting comparison, and that's Benny Inma. Benny Inma is another really party-oriented single-target saber, and I think this pretty clearly shows that Benny Inma at this point really does need an NP interlude. 
And the easy example of this is because at NP1 outside of niche, Benny Enma is a good 200k less than even Saber Hokusai. This is again using something like Ocean Flyer. But if you even include one power mod, the numbers start to climb quite a bit. At two power mods, we're back up to 400k. And basically at NP2, with two power mods, we'd actually be beating the Trung Sisters. And at one power mod, we'd be close. So I think the problem here is just that you do kind of need that standard NP interlude for her. But yes, she would be very strong in niche if they did that. Still, I think it's it's kind of overdue at this point as Benny Inma has been around for a long time. And then as we look towards Bride, Bride, I'm going to say, is probably the epitome of a unit that doesn't need it because Bride has so much other usefulness. So as we start looking at this, just a sort of naked NP1 here. Well, sorry, not naked, but like with the actual supports, just at NP1, no niche. Uh, you would be looking at basically 385 there by wave three, which is certainly comparable, but not like not nearly as good, right? The second you get into Sky Niche, though, all of a sudden Bride is right up there competitive with the Trung Sisters. So that is a thing. And there is nothing stopping you from using the Trung Sisters with a unit like Nero Bride or Benny Inma and just kind of combining their their powers, if you will, to make a really effective damage comp against some annoying Lancer boss or something like that. And certainly then at NP2, and especially with the Sky Niche, you're looking at all of a sudden now just kind of going right over the top of the Trung Sisters. So at that point, I think you could say that Bride is still in a very good position since she is very flexible as far as units go. She has had a lot of upgrades over the years as well, so I think it has kept her still pretty good to this point in time. Now again, this is my opinion that the Trung sisters are probably a lot better than most people give them credit for. But what do you guys think about them and will you be rolling for them uh, basically today as this video comes out? I'll be curious to hear you guys' thoughts. Also, which Ascension form do you like of the Trung Sisters the best? I actually find them to be pretty interesting as uh, their design is very Pokemon-esque, if you will. So again, I'll be curious to hear you guys' thoughts and I will see you guys for the next video.